Mm-mm-mm. It's a huge one. It's a time for a package from China. Let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at the 7 inches of foam, the Eros 19 from Cool Baby. Yeah, so Cool Baby is a brand from China that makes a lot of different devices. I've reviewed many of them, like handhelds, plug and play devices, everything. But now with the new Eros, let's say the new version of the Eros 19, it's got a very interesting future. First of all, it's got Touch Baby. All right, so let's take a close look at this. So here we can see like the test 60 by 9 XPS ratio display with a resolution of 800 by 480. So to be honest, I cannot make up a lot of things out of it. I'm guessing this is the 3000 mAh battery that we're going to get inside. And it also has support up to PlayStation 1. So the features itself are quite interesting. At the back, we're going to get a couple of pictures and a little layout that I can't read because nothing is in English. And then we're going to get two controllers. So I'm guessing they also promote this like in game system. They can plug in your television or something, but there are no controls with it. The reason I picked it up is just of the touchscreen, something you don't see with like the budget devices. It's quite expensive that to pick it up. It's not like this $20 handheld, but you can see like with the quality, it's completely different. But we're going to take a close look later at this product. It comes with a Type-C for data transfer and charging. There is no power adapter you need to buy it separately. We're going to get crappy headphones. We're going to get an SD card. Let's see what we're going to get with SD card. And 32 gigabyte. It's in brandless, like never never seen a brand like that or there is no brand at all and it comes with a toilet paper metal deluxe mini but with no freaking english okay so first of all the quality of the device it's a mix i must like i was not really excited about it it looks kind of bulky it's not like a very nice design but let's do a quick overview of the controls and the horrible shitty d-pad okay over here we're going to get the minus and plus for configuration like the volume then we're going to get here the four buttons that need to be like the d-pad but they give us like the nintendo switch clone joystick so it's quite interesting so this side we're going to get the abxy the button touch is quite nice you can feel like it's slightly better quality than the like, cheap device i've reviewed before another joystick over here we're going to get the escape button for going back into the main menu and of course the select and start at the back we're going to get two speakers, or I'm guessing they're going to be two speakers, like there are two speaker roses, or holes, but there is nothing to say, like it's going to actually have two speakers. We need to open it up for that later. It has like 16 gigabyte built in with a very nice shiny sticker. But here you can see really some letters over here, because this thing has a USB, and that is the interesting part. So we can use up, let's say we can use some controllers, most of the time it's very limited. A microphone, TF, reset, and headphone jack. Then we're going to get the 5 volt for charging, the on off switch and an HDMI functionality. It's quite interesting. And not to forget, we're going to get 4 shoulder buttons. Let's take a close look at the weight of the device. Holy crap, this thing is almost 400 grams. To give you like a quick comparison, when we take a close look at, let's say, other cheap devices from China, they are almost around 150-170 grams. So you can see like the 7 inch is just a gigantic heavy beast. Alright guys, so I have reviewed many of these cheap X-Series handheld and basically the cool baby Eris 97 belongs in this collection too. They don't call it the X-Series handheld, but it should. Simply because when you're looking at this device and we'll boot it up, it will run on the same kind of software, only slightly different. Okay, so first of all let's remove this horrible screen protector because they just completely messed it up. Oh, okay. Before I made this video, finally I charged and handheld to begin with. Alright, so when booting it up, you will see like it will run on the same kind of server. Only now we're going to get some touch features. I must say, I have no idea what it's saying over there. Focus on game for 10 years. Cool baby. The boot up sequence takes up like 30 seconds or so. But in the end, like this is what you're going to get. So it looks slightly different than what the previous models have reviewed. The view angle, it's still really bad as you can see there. But what I don't like about it is the way how they basically like made this. At the beginning I was more like, hey, maybe we're going to get like an Android device. But nope, it doesn't. So here you're going to get the same shortcuts with some games. Take consideration when you're removing the SD card or the files get corrupted in general, you have like these shortcuts you cannot use or change so far, I know. So you can just touch them. That's it, like there is no way of changing it out. 
What I find funny, like with the menu you can see over here, you can navigate now with touch. The touch itself is quite responsive, so I must give them hand. I just give them extra kudos for that. We can change out the theme, but we have a lot of things that are more like why. What makes the point of this handheld? I'm just going to be honest, like I was quite disappointed. I was hoping for an Android device, and basically what you're going to get is the same crap all over again. And with crap, I mean like device. This device doesn't even work that well. Like, like try to scroll. And this you can clearly see like the software is not meant to do this. We're having functionalities like HDMI that we're going to try out quickly. Navigating through the menu is like a freaking nightmare. The brightness can be cranked up to 15, so I'm happy to do that in this video. But that's it. Like the backlight is really bad, especially when it is more like in the Lux model. Change out the TV out. You can change here the HDMI. So we're having AV out, and we're going to get HDMI out. But we didn't get like an AV out cable, so don't know for sure if that is go actually going to work. Over here. We can set the controllers and this is a new setting, something I've never seen with these cheap handhelds. But let's try some games and let's see how it works. To begin with the let's say the touch. I want to touch it, baby. I want to see how it does, how it works. Okay, so first let's try a touch game and just to see how it will work. So what I noticed like that it works quite good for a cheap handheld. I must say I have seen my share of shitty handhelds. And this one has the less shitty version when it comes to the touch. It's very responsive. The only downside, there is no way of, let's say, going on the internet to browse or do all such kind of things. So it's a little bit of a bummer in my opinion. And the only thing you can do is like play a lot of these knockoff of crappy games. And that's it. So the device itself goes quite loud. Of course I'm pressing the wrong button again. This time the music is not messed up. I find the gameplay itself quite choppy, especially when you're going to the left and the right. And if you're wondering, there is no way of changing it out. So I'm pressing the escape button. We're going back to the menu over here. We can change out some settings, key, screen size, stuff like that. But there is no way of changing out like filters and all the things to so get it a little bit better running. So it's the same crappy software we have seen before with the X6, X12 and all the other things. Okay, I can already tell you like I'm super disappointed because it's really bad. So this game also has the same issues like the previous handhelds. And what it just did is like grab the old crappy software, like add some new features to it. And they don't even bother like upgrading it. Like to begin with it's stupid emulator of the Super NES. Maybe it sounds okay now, but when you're just booting it up, it will like stutter like crazy. It's just one big mess of a situation. Alright, next up, let's try a main game. Take consideration, like, only the old stuff will work on this. So don't even think about Killer Stink or Mortal Kombat 1. The weird thing is with these cheap devices, it's almost like a mixed performance. Some handhelds run the game like fine, and the other one like runs it completely messed up. Especially with this game, it's a beefcake in dinos. You can see like it runs. Okay, man, like beefcake man is here. I gonna build your web now. Woo, blow you up. No. Okay, so a fun fact about PlayStation 1. So far I know the first generation like years ago could already run or boot up PlayStation. Because when you try to play it, it runs like shit like this. Like, and with this new edition of Cool Baby, they're running this old school tech in combination with the old software. We're going to get still shitty performance. When you try some two dimensional games, it's highly possible it can have a better performance. But come on man, a three dimensional game, or a game like this doesn't even run. What a freaking joke. Okay guys, I'm just going to be honest with you guys. It, it, it's like a freaking nightmare man. Like I was hoping we're going to get something better. Like you're paying quite a lot of money for a device like this. And I was like, hey, finally cool baby, different brand. There is no X series involved. Maybe this has like a kind of an old firmware when it comes to Android. I've seen it many times before, but it can make like some awesome, decent products. But this is just a freaking joke, if you ask me. And I mean like joke, 
You're using the old crappy software and just adding new features to it. It's like, how crappy can you make it? Okay, let's pry it and open because we've removed the four parkers and let's see what this thing looks on the inside. Okay guys, so let's take a close look in the inside. What I find quite interesting is like, finally we're going to get actually like two freaking speakers. A lot of these old, or better said, like also new, let's say X-Series handhelds have the issue that we're having the option for two speakers, but they are not installing it. I think it's like a cost effective thing. Here we're going to get the PSV that's connected for the touch, and this is actually the ribbon cable for the LCD itself. Kind of see what kind of milliamp battery, but you can see like they are also soldering straight onto the main board. Some of the, let's say, more expensive ones like Ambonic have like a connection just because pulled it out if your battery is died and you just need to replace it. So that is like one gigantic piece to be in here, specially made for this handheld. Uh, it's quite interesting, there is no date whatsoever. Yeah. Okay, but I'm not giving up, I just want to see some more. Let's remove the on and off switch, let's remove a couple of parkers. Just to see if you can lift up this main board and yeah, what's inside. Uh, like, what is the production date of this device? Is it actually like a completely new product? Is it very old? That is something I just want to see. And I love to do these teardowns just to see what is in the inside. Yeah. Mm, okay, I almost forgot two parkers over here. One here. And of course, I removed the SD card because. <laughs> And we will also keep the main board in place because it's sticking out over here. All right, let's remove all the tiny parkers and let's see if we can lift out the main board this time. Yep, it's getting some movement. We also use some hot glue over there for keeping the battery in place, so that's a very good thing. So let's lift it to the other side and let's see what we're going to get here. But it's just clear to see that they are making these PCBs, especially for these handhelds. Over here we can see that the device itself has been made in 2020, 08, 03. So it's not like a brand new product that I'm making this, but it's fairly new. Because sometimes with these Chinese handhelds you can find like devices that are like, a, like 5 year old, like 10 years old sometimes. But that's not the case with this one. And the chip, I tried to find some information, but I couldn't find any. But I think I like with the ADJ 2279B. I have seen this chip many times before and all the other cheap handhelds. So yeah, it's the same stuff, the same crap, same hardware and same software all over again. The HDMI is just a plug and play solution. It's very happy that I added to this device. And of course, you can play this way very easily. Yeah, but the only problem is with the system, the emulation is really bad. Even if you're having like a good functioning HDMI solution, finally after like 20 different handhelds, the emulation itself, it's not like perfect. I need to get some bananas. When you're looking at the X-Series and you're looking at the school baby device, in my opinion, it's just the same stuff all over again, only bigger, slightly better, and with, for example, bigger battery, HDMI functionality, better joysticks, they are trying, but still, why the same shitty software? If they fixed it or they slapped a good Android piece of software on it, this device has so much potential. It looks kind of bulky, it weighs quite heavy, but yeah, it's the beginning of something. But in this, let's say, way it is, it's not really something I would like play on a daily basis. I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit that bell, become one of the Wax family, and we'll see you in the next video.